My name is Bart DeMarshall. I'm professor of neurology at Mayo Clinic and director of Mayo Clinic Telestroke Program. I've been invited to spend a few moments to share with you the updates regarding the Telestroke Regional Program in Arizona and Mayo Clinic Telestroke Initiative institution-wide. The Mayo Clinic Telestroke Program has been present since 2007. We started early clinical trials with two regional hospitals in Yuma and Kingman, Arizona, and determined safety, effectiveness uh, of a live audio-video telemedicine connection between a neurologist at Mayo Clinic and the emergency physician accompanying the patient and family at the remote hospital. The Telestroke program and network has grown immensely since then. Uh, we've moved from an initial two-spoke hospital network uh, to currently a 12-spoke hospital network. Uh, two recent additions, Casa Grande Regional Medical Center south of Phoenix, as well as our first Indian Health Services Tribal Hospital in Tupa City. Uh, the knowledge gained by Mayo Clinic Telestroke in the regional Arizona network has been shared, as you would expect, at an institution like Mayo Clinic with our counterparts in Florida campus. And the neurology department at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, also serves as a telestroke hub to uh, a community hospital south of it in Titusville. Neurology colleagues in Florida and ourselves in Arizona are now working closely with our colleagues in Rochester, Minnesota to develop telestroke for the Mayo Clinic Health System. It's a, it's a unique opportunity uh, to extend the expertise of stroke neurologists in Rochester, St. Mary's Hospital, uh, to all of the existing hospitals within the network of the Mayo Clinic Health System who may not have access to the neurology expertise necessary for the diagnosis and uh, emergency management of the patient with symptoms and signs of stroke. Telestroke is the most mature clinical discipline of telemedicine applied to neurology. Recently, Mark Rubin, <clears throat> a neurology resident in Rochester, Minnesota, and I have completed a systematic review of all of the published literature on telemedicine applied to the clinical neurological sciences. And one of the things we discovered is that a full third of everything published related to telemedicine applied to neurology is in the field of the emergency management of stroke. Just to give you some sense of how rich uh, uh, the depth and maturity, sophistication of that literature compared to telemedicine applied to other subspecialties in neurology. <clears throat> in telestroke, we have learned many things. We've learned that the evaluation is reliable, that it's valid. We've learned that a telemedicine consultation for an acute stroke syndrome uh, results in uh, accurate diagnoses and determination of management plans. We've learned that it's an effective strategy and it's superior to the standard uh, care applied to the patient in a remote community without access to neurological expertise. And most importantly, we've learned that it's a cost effective and even cost savings uh, treatment consultation paradigm. What we wish to do next is apply the same sort of research principles to telemedicine applied to other neurological disciplines. We'd like to learn, again, the reliability, validity, effectiveness, safety, and cost-effectiveness of telemedicine applied to other clinical circumstances, whether it be coma, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, dementia, migraine headache, and the like. It's important that as our field advances that we don't routinely apply telemedicine to other disciplines without appropriate study. We are likely to learn that there are some disciplines where telemedicine lends itself brilliantly and there may be other disciplines or facets of disciplines where telemedicine may not be the most favorable consultation paradigm. Our Telestroke Research Group has recently completed and published a study in stroke, uh, September 11, 2012, uh, highlighting the results of application uh, smartphone teleradiology uh, application uh, within the live telemedicine network. 
essentially what we did was we compared neurologist interpretation of a CT scan of stroke patients on a, an iPhone teleradiology application to the interpretations by radiologists through traditional means compared against an adjudication committee. 53 patients were consented to participate in the study and the results demonstrated that there is excellent agreement in the range of 92 to 100 percent uh, over the most important radiological features of the CT scan in those acute stroke patient syndromes. This, re this research and, and others like it has tremendous implications. Uh, traditionally we use desktop workstations, we use telemedicine platforms, sophisticated technology to allow a live audio video interaction with a patient in need. The research we've conducted recently have suggested that with a device as simple as a smartphone that fits in the palm of our hand or our pocket, we may be able to transmit in a safe, secure environment, patient-related data, radiological images, diagnostic study results, treatment algorithms, and make diagnoses and treatment recommendations for patients at the same time as allowing a video conferencing interface. If you'd like more information about Mayo Clinic Telestroke, our clinical network, and recently published research, please feel free to visit our website.